So before I walked onto the rowing team freshman year of college, I was an athlete in high school, but in a different, in two different sports, swimming and lacrosse. Um, I played both of them pretty intensely, but not at a high enough level to be recruited um, and was considering walking on to the lacrosse team, but ended up switching over to rowing um, and trying that out instead. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm May May Weston, and this is my friend, Calista Scoras. Um, Calista, hey. do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, my name's Calista. I'm a senior right now on the Harvard Women's Lightweight Crew Team. Um, I've known May May for four years or so. We walked on to the team at the same time. Nice. So, Calista, you walked onto the team with me. So both of our lives looked a little different before we joined the rowing team. What was your life like pre-college athlete career? So before I walked onto the rowing team freshman year of college, I was an athlete in high school, but in a different, in two different sports, swimming and lacrosse. Um, I played both of them pretty intensely, but not at a high enough level to be recruited um, and was considering walking on to the lacrosse team, but ended up switching over to rowing um, and trying that out instead and have stuck with it ever since. Now, rowing is a very different sport from swimming and lacrosse. What made you choose rowing? So I think one thing that's really nice about rowing is that it's a sport that not a lot of people have access to early on in life. And because of that, it's a sport that's very tolerant of people starting later in life. So a lot of people start rowing in high school and get recruited. And a lot of people start rowing in college and end up competing internationally after. Um, so I really liked the fact that rowing um, is so tolerant of people starting um, very late or relatively late in life, as opposed to something like soccer, where kids start playing at the age of four. Um, uh, but yeah, that was the thing that drew me to rowing. Um, and then also, I think I... I really value out of sports more than anything. I value the fitness aspect of it. Um, that's something I really loved about swimming. Um, and then in lacrosse, I, my favorite part of lacrosse was getting in shape and being like being a fast sprinter, having good endurance. Um, so because of that, I figured that I needed a sport that was really focused on your fitness, your strength and overall endurance. Mm. Now you mentioned the, why you like, or why you joined rowing, part of it was the fitness aspect of it. Um, why why do you feel like fitness has, or how has fitness added value to your life? Fitness has added value to my life in a lot of ways. Um, I think the main, the main way is that it kind of gives me something to work towards. Um, with pretty much any sport I've played in my life or just working out in general, um, if you stick at it for long enough, you see fitness gains and that reward of seeing all your hard work pay off is almost addicting. Um, I love it. Um, so that's what it, it really, it motivates me and gets me excited. And obviously there are setbacks and sometimes you have to like start again at square one, but I feel like the work you put into your fitness goals, you end up getting out at the end. Um, and that's something that's really special and not true in a lot of things. Um, but in fitness, it, it usually works out that way. Yeah. Especially on a team, the community aspect of it adds so, so much. We had a yeah. sisterhood or I, we still do. I still do. I'm still very <laughs> much connected to the sisterhood of, of Harvard rowing, but yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. One thing I haven't touched on is that having do like doing workouts with a group of girls all together just makes it so much easier, so much better and rewarding. Um, I feel like you form bonds with people that are very, very hard to form um, in other ways. Um, sort, of, sort of the the shared like trauma <laughs> of going through hard workouts in the cold really brings you closer together. Um, and it makes you like work harder for sure when you know everyone else is um, also trying to trying to work as hard as they can next to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now for everyone out there, Calista was my erg buddy. We uh, we had to, in order to 
pass the novice team and make it onto the varsity team, uh, we had to hit a sub eight minute 2K on the indoor rowing machine. And me, Callista, and our other friend, Sophie, uh, banded together. We started erging every day and we had to hit our splits. And that continued on to the varsity team as well. I always loved yeah. erging beside Callista. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like you and I were always on the same page with our, our split goals. It was just like, it was, it was honestly kind of eerie. I feel like how close we all, we were and we just got better together as we continued on the team. Um, so it's, it's awesome to have someone next to you. That's sort of just in it, in it with you. Um, same goals. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what does your typical day on the team look like? So we have morning practice pretty much every day, six days a week. Um, and that's at 7am, which is not, is not as bad as it used to be. It used to be 6am, which is brutal, but I think seven is a reasonable, really is a reasonable agree. time. Um, so we do seven to about nine 30. Um, and so I'll wake up six 30 or so walk over to the boathouse, eat a protein bar on that, on that walk, maybe a banana too. Um, and then we'll have practice and then everyone showers, gets changed and we walk over to breakfast. Um, and so that's the, that's my morning routine. Then I'll have class after, um, sort of depends, um, on the day, but maybe 10 30, 12 o'clock class. Um, and then in the afternoons, usually, or three times a week, we'll have lift. And that's just an hour, um, of working on like strength, um, which is very different from just typical rowing training, which is just like taking strokes for two hours, all practice. Um, so it's really fun to switch it up there with lift. Um, so yeah, we'll do that three times a week in the afternoons. And then there's one afternoon where we'll have another rowing practice, um, just to get extra meters in. Um, but yeah, I think having the, the double sessions kind of breaks apart the school day in a way such that I feel like I have to be very productive with my time. Um, and that's that's a good thing because I don't know if I could sit in a library for seven hours straight and be productive for those seven hours. But if I broke them up by having a, a lift in between, then I think I could be more efficient with my work. Okay. So you think that adding the different sessions and more sessions of fitness and sports throughout your day has actually increased your time management and efficiency? Definitely has increased my time management and efficiency. Um Sometimes it becomes a lot, like school can be overwhelming, balancing that with athletics and social stuff. Um, so sometimes having these extra sessions isn't what it isn't, isn't what I want to get all my schoolwork done and get a lot of sleep. Um, but I think overall, um, it is, it does make me much more productive, much more focused on time management, um, which are definitely skills that I will take with me for the rest of my life. Um, I remember like there are some times where like once I was sick for basically a week, I was out for a week, not training. And I was like, okay, well, it sucks that I'm sick and I can't practice, but at least I'm going to get so much work done this week. And I really did not get any work done that week. I was so much less productive, got like far fewer amounts of work done than I normally do. And that's when I was like, wow, I think I need rowing or at least some sort of fitness routine to kind of keep me in check. Yeah, absolutely. I When I don't start the day with some type of physical activity, my productivity levels are just unparalleled. Like they, they yeah. just, there's no match to it. So yeah, um, I definitely know what you mean there. I um, think it's, Sorry, I think it's interesting. Um, some people say that they're morning people and they'll like to work out in the mornings. Some people like to work out in the afternoons. I think if I had had it my way, I would work out in the afternoons because I don't see myself as a super, super morning person. Um, but at the same time, be like by being kind of forced to follow this morning practice schedule, I think it's I think it may be switching or that might might be changing my mind. Um, and I think like, even though it's tough to wake up early in the morning and I'm like, I really don't have to be waking up this early um, after the practice is over and I'm eating breakfast at 9.30 a.m. and I've done a full workout, 
I'm like, wow, I've, I've gotten a productive start to the day. Like this is, this is good momentum that I'm going to keep carrying with me for the rest of the day. So maybe rowing has changed my mind and I'll, I'll start doing the the morning workouts instead um, after I graduate. I don't think you're a morning person until you're a morning person. Like you, cause you have to completely change your circadian rhythm uh-huh. and uh, adapt to that. And then there, you see some beauty into it, but yeah. I, I'm sure there's beauty in, in both working out in the morning and the afternoon. Depending. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So you are at school now. So mm-hmm. your dining and eating and nutrition habits are a little bit different from what they would look like if you were at home. So can you describe a little bit what the dining situation is like and maybe some of your favorite staples uh, in the in the dining situation? That you're yeah. <laughs> um, so the Harvard dining um, situation is great. We sort of pay a one-time fee for meals all semester and that's unlimited swipes. So we can go into the dining hall whenever or like as much or as little as we want and it's the same amount. Um, which honestly incentivizes you to just like eat as much as you can there um, because you're getting unlimited food. Um, So that's great. Not having to worry about how much quantity I'm consuming. Like if I were to have to pay more for extra quantity. Um, So I go there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I think, although some people aren't the biggest fans of the dining hall, I think the beauty of the dining hall is that there are so many options so if you don't like the hot food there's something in the salad bar for you and if you don't like that then you could have like the pasta that's always around um so I think the variety is huge um and then as for certain staples I'd say for breakfast I'm a big Greek yogurt girl May May definitely knows this she is (laughs) (laughs) I I personally am a big Greek yogurt promoter because I think it has an unmatched amount of protein in it um, compared to a lot of other breakfast foods. Um, And protein is definitely, as an athlete, protein is definitely something that I actively think about when I'm trying to build my plate. Um, So that's, that's certainly one staple. And I think like with the yogurt, I'll supplement that with granola, cinnamon, Sometimes I'll have oatmeal on the side with that. Bananas in the yogurt, also great. Peanut butter in the yogurt, great. Um, Yeah, lots of of different things you can do with yogurt. Uh, And then moving on to lunch and dinner, I'd say both of them are, my lunch looks very similar to my dinner. Um, I usually get a bowl because we have these big bowls that you can get instead of plates. I think a bowl lets you mix a lot of things more easily, which is fun. Um, so I'll usually do a base of some sort of spinach or kale, lettuce, and then I'll add pretty much anything that looks good, um, on that given day. And that's normally chicken. The D-Hall does a lot of chicken, um, which I think is great because it's a pretty, as far as meat goes, it's a pretty non-controversial meat. Um, it's hard to really mess up, um, as long as it's cooked enough, um, and I think it's a it's a lean protein where you're getting a lot of protein. It's a lean meat where you're getting a lot of protein um, and not a lot of cholesterol or like fats, like the saturated fats. Um, so that's that's why I'm a big um, proponent of chicken. I probably eat too much of it, and I <laughs> sometimes it gets too a little much boring. as an athlete. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it gets a little boring, but the the D Hall finds ways to add different spices so that it seems like a different type of chicken every day. Um, so I'll add chicken, um, hummus and chickpeas. Those are great too. Also a lot of protein, um, sweet potatoes. I love it. They're a good source of carbs and they also have a lot of like vitamins apparently. Um, and they just taste delicious. Um, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then sometimes if I'm, if I've had a big workout or will have a big workout the next day, I'll pay more attention to my carbs and like trying to add some more carbs to give me that extra energy or replenish energy. Um, but so, and that would normally come in the form of like rice, um, or additional like potatoes and stuff like that. Um, and then for dessert, I can't say no to another bowl of yogurt for sure. Uh, <laughs> but they also have some nice snacks around like cookie bars, um, pies, so sometimes I like to mix that in there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So that's the meal schedule. Um, so those, those three meals, in addition to my morning protein bar or banana before practice. And then if we have a second practice, I'll do the same thing, have like a protein bar before that. Um, I think something that I've thought about more and more now that I'm a college athlete working out a lot is that I want to make sure I'm fueled a lot right before and right after my activities. And I want to concentrate my fueling around that. Um, so that's why like I I always want to be eating a little bit on the way to practice and then after practice knowing that I'll be going to a d-hall and refueling very cool yeah I I do remember the there's a lot of controversy over the Harvard dining hall but I think with a little bit of creativity you can put so many different combinations together even if there's like the same staples there uh, there's always the soups, there's always like the ice yeah. cream bar, the yogurts, the grill, the entrees, the the hot, the hot bar, I admittedly did not dip into very often, because as you said, the, uh, the meats were a little sketchy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the salad bar had a very plentiful array of options. So yeah, uh, yeah. Totally. Um, and I'm very lucky not to have to think about preparing all these meals. And I'm, I'm lucky that I can just walk into the D hall and put whatever I want on my plate. Um, I'm definitely spoiled with that because over the summers when I'm trying to get my own food before or after work, it's, or make my own food in my kitchen. It's just like, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot of time, a lot of mental energy. So it's, it's nice to just sort of like walk in and know that I'm going to figure out something in that d hall and i don't have to think about it in advance yeah absolutely especially as a student i think that uh you have a especially as a student athlete you are probably busier now than you ever will be uh so it's really nice i know that as a recent graduate as well for myself um it i'm so grateful to have had as you said uh, not have to think about preparing food. Um, yeah. And I actually really enjoy preparing food now after, you know, after having graduated, but I would definitely would not have uh, enjoyed it. As when well. you have the time, it's fun. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you don't have the time. It's a different story. Yeah. Well, Calissa, thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to catch up with you again soon. Yeah, of um, course. But yeah. Thank you for joining us. Of course. My pleasure. Really happy to help out and talk about this. Um, definitely rowing and eating are two of my favorite pastimes so talking about them both in one call is is great we we share we share that love for rowing and eating (laughs) (laughs) thanks calista bye baby